Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rena Wells and I am a medicine woman. I work predominantly with psychedelic plants. I have close to 30 years of jumping into my gifts and healing the subconscious and merging my consciousness with my subconscious. So I have a great understanding of how energy moves, works, and the healing process in regards to cellular, DNA, ancestral, karma, all of those things. So welcome to my channel, you guys. I'm going to be doing a dark work series. You may want to listen to the rest of the other, uh, start with the first one because it, it goes into more of my credentials of why I'm able to speak to psychological patterns. I'm able to distinguish between uh, fine discerning energies that uh, make it uh, complicated for most people to be able to move through traumas and addictions and things like that. And that's just a gift that I've been given by spirit in my lifetime. So I want to go into today in regards to the narcissistic and empath uh, paradigm that I'm sure you've heard about in the new age community and in the psychology world. I'm going to get into a little bit more in regards to what that means energetically and however spirit brings these messages through. I do channel. So I do set aside my own consciousness and allow spirit to work through me. And I do work with just the one creator. Okay, so let's get started. If you are new, take a look around. Welcome. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And my original uh, subscribers, to all my subscribers, I'm doing my best to connect to your intuition so that spirit can guide me through these teachings to help you on your path, on your sacred journey into enlightenment. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to just take a few deep breaths. I am drinking my coffee this morning. Um, so just give me a second. Let me just get centered. If you do are wearing earbuds and you hear, uh, someone's, they're doing landscaping outside. So I'm sorry, my windows are closed, but they're just under my window right now. Okay. Okay. I'm going to talk about a little bit about the alien love bite. I think I'll link it down below. It came across uh, to me years ago, the alien love bite. I'm going to talk about sacred connections and narcissistic and uh, empath paradigm. And we're going to go into the state of relationships on the planet and how we all encompass these different archetypes, or I don't want to say archetypes, um, these different mental prisons of empath and narcissistic paradigm. And I'm going to get into the real explanation of empath because a lot of people get mistaken between fragility and empathic. While I'm sensitive, um, a lot of narcissists also who are predominantly in the frequency of more darkness, more dynamic energy or low entity energy, believing that they are doing the good for the planet. We see that a lot in regards to um, in the new age community that they're doing the good for the, I, mean, I guess we could say like Illuminati and things like that, that they're doing the good for the planet. And into certain instances and things like that, thank you. It's weird to saying everyone has to come in and play a role in a certain frequency in order to catalyze others. So there are, thank you, it's weird to saying in every incarnation, certain chosen ones that have hit a certain state of evolution process that are able to incarnate into this reality and hold a certain frequency of empath ascension and higher light codes. Now, just as much as there are people that hold those codes, there are others that have come in that have uh, made contracts with darker forces because that is their way of healing their karma and moving through their darker energies to find their light. So there are certain... Um, thank you. Spirit is saying that's just the basic. There are so many other minute details and frequencies and different things that happen depending on the person's personal evolution process. So when I get into the alien love bite, I'll link that down below. I think his name was Tom something. I can't remember. It's not in my head right now, but they talk a lot about these um, twin flame alien love bites. And there are other entities from other galaxies, other star seeds, other you know, there are different forms of frequencies incarnated on the planet. And so these really dark, I call them the Wetiko, really dark, dark entities come in and they mimic true twin divine counterpart energies. And this is where a lot of people think they've met their twin and it's a false twin. All these different labels get created. But I want to get into the uh, 
aspect of what's happening in the empath narcissist paradigm get into distorted feminine energy, distorted masculine energy, and to show you how it's relatable in the collective. Now, Spirit wants to bring up uh, mind patterns and the one God intelligence. Let me just take a sip of coffee here. Okay, so the one God intelligence, Spirit is saying that as a collective, <laughs> thank you, Spirit, there is a, there's only one being on this planet. So Spirit wants you to recognize that, that, you know, we are all source, uh, you know, we're all uh, the ocean, but just a, uh, a drop in the ocean. And that's how we scattered here on the planet. We are one consciousness, but we each hold a piece of that consciousness of the whole. Very much like a hologram. When you smash a hologram and you take a piece of that hologram, when you put it under a microscope, you will see the entire image, you know. So the entirety is within all of us. And we all have to come into different frequencies in order to make the one consciousness and the one mind work and evolve and move through this time and space that we have chosen to come into earth at this particular time. So spirit is saying, because somebody has much more darker energies, and we're going to call them, you know, the karmic person or the narcissist, it's mainly because they have such dense energies that they haven't found their light, that they're still on that discovery point. Now, those that are on a twin flame journey or a high sacred level journey, they came with uh, higher light codes. They didn't, they've already achieved those light codes, Spirit is saying, from previous incarnations, other worldly incarnations, other universal incarnations. So they were created uh, in with these codes. And so those that have come into this uh, lower frequency, narcissistic, we'll call them, right? Or karmic or whatever. Uh, thank you. Spirit is saying they have forgotten those light codes. They have to earn them. They have to achieve them. That uh, they had other opportunities and for some they didn't take those opportunities and they continued to work out of selfish greed and instead of surrender to a higher power. Now, coming into this time space uh, timeline that we're in right now, Spirit is saying that they are the ones that are, uh, thank you, trying to hijack the light code individuals, right? Because they're seeking it. That's their life mission. That's what they're here to do. They're trying to find their light again because they've lost it so many lifetimes and so many other experiences that they've had. And so when you get into the narcissist empath dynamic, these are the distortions that are playing out in the one mind consciousness and we can see that in our world i'm bringing up johnny depp and amy is it amber amy a amber heard okay um for some reason like <laughs> spirits telling me to bring this up because I, i've been obsessed with johnny depp since i was like young river phoenix johnny depp oh my god love their energy definitely believe they have a star seed type of quality kind good-hearted men you know like soft souls and uh it's funny that this has just come across my feed lately, and I know it's all over social media, but if you look at Amber and the narcissism that she has, right, based on, and I'm going to tell you, that's uh, based on beauty standards. There, If you look back at her history years ago, they talk about uh, how there was a computer that, that picked out the most beautiful woman in the world, and it was, it was Amber Heard. So... This world and this construct of these darker forces that have created the illusion of the matrix, right, of this of this uh, curtain of illusion, um, what's happened is they've created, uh, they've hijacked, thank you, Spirit is saying, highly uh, certain DNA uh, frequencies that match a certain, you know, standard that they can manipulate based on physical chemical responses. Because that's all we are learning to do in this reality, right? We are learning how to transcend the physical body, transcend the chemical responses into the soul, into the higher self, to clear the vessel so that the higher light codes can come in, that God can come into our vessel. 
Now, in order to do that, we have to heal our addictions to the physical stimulus. And that's our belief patterns, that's food, that's uh, how, we, uh, how we think of our identity, that is how we appear in the mirror to ourselves and our thought processes around that. It's how we are in society, how we identify our roles and our human roles. Who am I in my family? Who am I in society? All of these constructs are physical chemical reactions that give us some type of physical buy-off within ourselves that feed our ego. So Spirit is bringing this up because there is a standard for beauty standards and we see that in our world, right? And a lot of these, and I'm going to just bring up because the example of Amber Heard has really come up, um, beautiful woman, beautiful, skin deep, okay? <laughs> um, but if you are raised from the time that you were little, right, with these beauty standards, everybody is conditioned. They're going to, you know, uh, see this little child, the parents, the family, everyone on the street, they're going to just come around this child. This child is beautiful. This child is beautiful. Children are empathic. They feel the energy. Okay. If a child ain't, I'm going to be like, every child is beautiful, but if they don't aesthetically meet the physical appearance of this matrix, people are like, Oh, that child is, every child is beautiful. But they're like, Oh, they'll turn their head away and be like, Oh, did you see that kid was kind of ugly because it didn't meet I hate even just saying that, but it's like they didn't meet certain aesthetic qualities. You know, there is a, a blip in that energy feeling, in that empathic energy. And all humans and all living sentient beings, plants, animals live off this energetic empathic wavelength at different frequencies. We all have it, including narcissists. We may say that a narcissist or somebody that's very dark can't feel. They do feel, you guys. They feel, they have to, we all have empathic gifts. We all have this ability to feel our environment. We, we have that naturally when we're born. Babies, when they come out of the womb, naturally find the breast of the mother. They intuitively know, okay, their souls are awakened. So we all have this empathic ability. However, those that sit in the darker realms know when the light is coming in to break up their patterns. They know when their energy is shifting. They know when they're about to experience massive lack, loss, uh, humiliation, any of those things. And so they create the lies in the, you know, to keep their illusions going. And they become, they swear to show me like a cyclic energy, you know, they, they feed off of high empathic light code P individuals people that are here to help transcend the world and to heal the one consciousness mind of humanity uh they they find a source whether that be through work through a partner and they continuously feed to siphon to and close off all other avenues to have that person or that situation escape so that they can create an identity and keep feeding off that energy until it dries up and if you look at johnny depp and amber Heard, that's exactly what's happening okay that's the best example i can give you guys right now and these beauty standards, Spirit is saying, is in condition. Now, these souls picked these aesthetically looking bodies for a reason to transcend the aesthetics of this world of what beauty really is. Because, uh, thank you. And Spirit is saying, you can see it everywhere in our world, right? Uh, you know, um, that it creates a, thank you, Spirit, a type of personality, Okay. And it creates a, scent, uh, a type of fragility. So with beauty standards and matching the matrix beauty standards, you gain a sense of power. It has been proven that if somebody is more attractive and, go into, and they go into an interview, they are more likely to charm and get the job than somebody who's more qualified for the job, but just don't look the part. You know, we have so many judgments on our human conditioning based on names, culture, you know, I'm as a brown woman, I can tell you my maiden name is Ali, which is a Muslim name, right? You know, people would judge that with, you know, oh, Al, that's an Indian girl. Well, hmm, you know, it would be harder for me before I took my, my ex-husband's name Wells, before I did that, you know, um, you know, I found it easier without someone seeing me, you know, because my name Rena is also, you know, or, you know, somebody like Jagdeep or something like that wouldn't, or, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying that we have these type of standards in this world. Now, it's changed a lot, you know, over the years. We're becoming more inclusive and more, you know, um, getting rid of this, the race and the judgment and the culture and 
and defiance and all of these things, which is amazing. And this is why we're seeing all these different things popping up in the collective, you know, the body positive movement and all of those things and getting rid of racism and Black Lives Matter. Like all of these things are happening because humanity is waking up to heal the one God's mind intelligence, right? That's here on the planet. However, <laughs> the ones that are fighting it are people like Amber Heard, right? The ones that are um, have gained power out of their aesthetic beauty. Um, and it's not just the aesthetic beauty. People can get this from, you know, their intelligence. People that can get this like, oh, I'm like the, the I'm, I won a Nobel Prize or I built a business that is so huge or, you know, they create a, a role on, um, in their life and become an identity to that, you know, um, social media, for instance, you know, myself, I could even say, oh, I'm a healer. I'm doing all that. I could even identify with, I don't, but you could even identify with that and then create an ego and responses out of that. So this is, this is where the narcissism energy comes up because that identity is their livelihood because they were raised from a very young age to uh, recognize that it was good. They got good positive affirmations that based on, you know, uh, what they do or how they look is, you know, uh, is a positive thing. It's their, who they are. Now, you can take that not just with aesthetically beautiful, you can take that with, you know, say a fiery personality or, you know, some a, a child that is humorous or makes big jokes. Oh, he's the clown of the family. That The girl is the clown of the family. And, you know, we identify very young and they can, you know, uh, Jim Carrey is coming to mind. You know, they can, he was like that since he was a kid and it becomes an identity. You know, he grew out of that. He's awakened since, I mean... We're not going to get into that. I don't know why I'm bringing up celebrities, but I think it's the best way to spirits bringing it that way. So, um, yeah. So whatever identity we have gotten from the time that we were young, we continue to adhere to those identities. And so when we start waking up and we come into relationships, right, and we're looking for that sacred one, we're looking for the one that God made us for. These darker forces are not going to want you to level up, right? So they find these darker forces already know, right? When you've come here, okay, they they run the grid work system, okay? The real light code system of Mother Earth is hidden under a dark matrix, okay? The darker codes um, is is what is currently breaking down in our structure. And we're seeing that the society is breaking down all this stuff with COVID, all of this stuff. I don't even want to say it, but it's like all of this is breaking down because that is the illusion. The curtain is starting to move out of its way to show earth's true frequency of oneness and harmony. And in the new age community, we call that the 5d, right? So let me take a sip of coffee here. Right. So spirit is saying all these different identities. Now, you can even have an identity if you come from an abused childhood that you're not good enough and you're not any of this. And it doesn't matter even if you match the aesthetic beauty standard, you know, or the intelligence standard or whatever the standard is. Right. Um, you will always strive into, you know, feeling not good enough to strive into something else. So, again, remember, from when we're young, these identities show uh, show us um, our wounding, our core wounding of who we are. Now, those that came in as twins to be a, um, who are on a sacred journey to help elevate the planet have higher light codes. And on top of the identity that these, these, um, evolved souls have, right. That they've had to come into this matrix and then they've created an identity based on the trauma based on whatever was told to them when they were children, those roles and those identifications, as they've grown up, Spirit is saying, and they've started to awaken, okay, that core wounding plays into them trying to uh, fit into a role that matches their assets. So if you're, 
you know, say for instance, super intelligent or super artistic and you have these gifts, but you are made to, you know, you come from a traumatic background or you've had a lot of abuse in your life. That lack and that self-worth will then continuously push you. It'll become your fuel to push you into an identity of, you know, your smarts, your intelligent, your gifts. To And that just creates another role again, though, right? That just creates another identification. So that's the first part of recognizing within yourself where your fragility is, right? Because that fragility comes up when somebody says, well, you know, you're not that smart or um, you're not that beautiful or you're not that gifted and or jealousy comes up if somebody surpasses you, right? If somebody, um, you know, so you're learning a language and, and all of a sudden you're your friend and you decide to learn a language together and then, you know, your, your friend surpasses you and that makes you feel like crap, you know, um, that's an identity that is a fragility, right? Because you've identified with your intelligence to learn a language. So because there's no such thing as feeling bad, because if you're truly aligned in yourself and you know yourself as a soul, you actually become happy for somebody who can transcend you or or, trans, or elevate beyond what you've taught them or elevate or gain something fast. You know, there's no envy or jealousy in that. You know, it's just you're just happy for another person. So that's the aspect of fragility is because, thank you. So fragility is the aspect of your identification of who you think you are is being broken, right? That's fragile. That's that's not sensitivity. That is ego breaking, okay? Being a highly sensitive person and an empath, right? It's not even a role that we see all these things in the New Age community about, oh, we're sensitive, we're loving, we're caring, we feel everybody's energy, we, all of these beautiful things. It's a double-edged sword because you have to work through discernment and that discernment means that you have to know the dark energies you have to know the discernment of when it it slightly switches from narcissistic to love because you have to know those those boundaries within yourself of when that energy switches because it's very difficult to recognize right you have to look at the psychological mind patterns and the belief systems that you have about yourself. You have to look at your identification of your role of who you believe yourself to be. And you have to be really connected to source because true empathic energy comes from God, comes is a gift for us to sort through the emotional realms within ourselves, right? And that fragility piece, which we can see, Amber Heard is coming to mind again. You know, if you watch these things is... um her her fragility is because that role of who she's who she's portrayed to the world as this beautiful actress and whatever else is completely breaking and you're seeing that people are like wow she's actually a really ugly human being <laughs> like she's got no feeling because she has sold her soul to the darker energies right to continue that role and that identification and that mask it's imposter syndrome right we have this imposter syndrome where we start to feel like we're living a double life and that's because of uh, the fragility, the wounding, and trying to find a role in our life, an identification in our life. And I know this is like one of the hardest aspects, especially in when you're coming into a divine union, it means that these identifications have to break apart. Now, the alien love bite, Spirit wants me to get into that. The alien love bite, which I'll post, I'll post, I'll comment and post some, some information, some links, um, these darker forces, uh, yeah, I'll post those links down below. Thank you, Spirit. These darker forces know when when um, higher codes come into this planet. So they know when you're pregnant, when your mother was pregnant with you. They know when um, because your code is so high, your vibration is so high. Um, for instance, when my mom was pregnant with me, um, these darker forces have tried to kill me. Okay, guys, I was in my mother's womb. My mom was like eight months pregnant or something like that. And they got into a horrible accident on the 401, spun out. Uh, my mom was so thankful that, you know, obviously I'm here. And then when I was like five years old, I was sitting on the car in my driveway. Um, I was just a kid playing on the, on the, on the driveway. Uh, there was a stop sign right across from me. And God told me, get off the car. That truck is going to hit you. And it was an 18-wheel truck. 
And I was, I didn't listen to the message. I just sat on the car and the guy, the truck driver said all of a sudden he doesn't know what happened. He had stopped at the stop sign, but he started to drive. He said something took over, like something he could not break. He could not move. And he sped and, and just was able to swerve, just missed the car, hitting me off the car. I would have been dead. Okay, guys. And it went into the neighbor's roof and destroyed their roof. Okay, he drove into the guy, the person's house. Okay, um, these darker forces have been after me my entire life. My entire life. Okay, they attack me. They they mess up my finances. They they chase me down. Right, because of the light codes. And you'll notice that you guys, if you're true impasse and you're on this sacred journey, these darker forces love your light. They come after you. And even if you heal, you're like, I've healed this. Um, why is this continuously coming to me? I'm here to tell you that it's because of your light is so bright. You have to have the discernment to know when to say no to those darker forces and to stand your ground. So for instance, spirit is bringing up with my twin, you know, um, he wanted me to work with the karmic and him together. A whole other story. I'm not going to go into that. And I said, no, because I know the energy. I know the energy. Now, in the past, if I didn't have these experiences with darker forces to know that energy discernment, me being the kind hearted person I'd be, I'd probably be like, yeah, okay, okay I'll do that. Because I always put other people before me. That has been something that's been very difficult for me to stop doing, right? Because I'm such a giver. People always take advantage of that. Always, 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 always. Um, and then they turn it up and then they become narcissistic and turn up on me and, and say, well, Raina throws her money around or she throws her, her light around or she thinks she's better and blah, blah. They make excuses about how I am as a human, right? So <laughs> to suit their, that's a narcissist, right? Because they can't suck from you any longer. So I want you to see that when we give, when we're empathic and we're these giving souls, right? We have to learn. And it's such a, my, I'm telling you guys, it's, it's, a, it's such a constant back and forth as an empath right to know that we are not falling into victim and f victim mentality and fragility that we're becoming empowered and that we're going to change up the roles and not be fearful to know ourselves and our sensitivity as a gift and to realize that yes sometimes it can be a curse because you're feeling everything but that that curse in quotations is helping you to discern darker forces so that you can help elevate other people out of those darker forces okay and so when you attach to these darker forces come in into a false twin flame, right? What we call the false twin or the people, you know, if your person's with a karmic person and they believe that's their person and all of these things, it's actually an energy power exchange, right? Because these, thank you, Spirit is saying, these darker forces come in. They know who you are. They've known you since you've been in your mother's womb. Excuse me, I need a sip of coffee. <clears throat> Sorry, the energy was coming up really strong there. <clears throat> um, they've known you since you've been in your mother's womb. They've been watching you. They will mimic your twin in, in an, um, a person that's housed by darker vessels. Okay, a person that has a lot of uh, dark energy to heal through. And... They'll know your state of consciousness. They watch you in the realms. They know they'll bring in the karmic person or the alien, the narc into your life. And they, it will feel amazing at first, right? Because it mimics your twin. It will have certain personality traits, certain identifications that you're still identified with of what you're attracted to in a soul place with your person, right? And they mimic it. But when they get into the, when you get into these connections with a narcissist and you're an empath, what happens is that that energy dies very quickly and you keep going deeper and deeper and working through the patterns with that person, you're going to recognize that person cannot heal, right? But they're trying to trap you or delay things to put the darker entities to put other things in place to keep the twins in separation so that they can manipulate, do black magic, work through other people who are housed by darker forces to keep this illusion alive on this planet. And so now they're bringing up again, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Go look at the, that whole case. You will see the charismatic kindness that comes out of Johnny Depp. He He's a soft soul. 
he's uh he's got that southern gentleman beautiful energy about him and then look at the energy with amber and just and just i just look at the case without any editing or music or anything like that. Just feel the energies out, okay? You will immediately feel the difference, right? So then what was the attraction? So Spirit is saying, if if you're dealing with narcissistic or, thank you, and, or you're doubting that this person is your twin because they're, they're so abusive, right? Because I'm going to tell you, twin flames are not abusive with each other ever, there's no abuse. There's no psychological damaging. There's no manipulation, right? The fear comes with that with your twin that that might happen because you have unhealed trauma from other people, right? But your twin will never, it's the same soul as you, right? Will never be abusive. So if you are questioning if this is your person, right? I'm telling you, and they've been abusive or it's been tumultuous in the sense of, you know, name calling or being abusive with each other, that is not a twin flame, okay? That's definitely a karmic situation, Okay. Um, but let's, let's get into that, that when you are in relationship with somebody that's housed with darker forces, spirit is saying you will constantly be in a push and pull dynamic that many people think is a twin flame dynamic. Okay. But it's tumultuous. Okay. The difference between a true sacred push and pull dynamic with twins is it? it's not, thank you, spirit is saying it's not a... Thank you. Fused by an angry energy, an energy that bubbles up in your chest where it feels like anxiety. Right. Okay. Thank you, Spirit. That, that covers your heart in a sense of anxiety where you can't breathe, a tightening of the chest. That is not a twin flame. Your twin flame when you feel them and things are just are not going well between you, it rises out of your gut. That actually makes you feel like you need to purge, nauseous. Not really, I don't even want to say nauseous, but it's not even nauseous. It's more of a queasy, uneasy feeling, but it's subtle. That something just doesn't feel right. Okay, and it rises up from your gut. And it may make you feel a little nauseous that rises up into your heart, but it's never... Uh, Mm -hmm. anxious so they're they're bringing up that the only time that you're anxious when you're speaking with your true twin is because of fear of uh, within yourself thank you okay thank you when you're when you are having a conversation with a narc okay with the alien love bite with somebody that's housed by darker forces you have anxiety because you're afraid of the other person's reaction Whereas if you're twin and talking to your twin, you're more afraid in yourself and nervous about yourself because you love your twin so much. So that's the difference. With a narc energy, it's you're afraid of the other person because of their reaction, okay? With your twin, it's like you're nervous because you either have to fess up, you have to confess your feelings, you have to be honest and open yourself. It's a nervousness within yourself. With a narcissist energy, you're nervous about the other person's reaction. Okay, that's the that's the difference. If you are worried about somebody else's reaction, right, and you're gonna have to walk on eggshells, you're gonna have to pussyfoot. That is not a divine union. That is not a divine counterpart. Okay, because with a divine counterpart, thank you, Spirit says you've already gained a certain. If you're, if you've met your true counterpart, you've already gained in your empathic uh, discernment of energy knowing who you are as a soul, that you have already alleviated a lot of those identification roles within yourself so that it's more or less a confession of your truth is where the nervousness comes out. Whereas with the narc energy, it is more about how the other person's, you're getting anxiety because you don't know how they're going to react because they're mad because you're, oh my God, that's the difference. And so Spirit is saying this dynamic, the world is waking up now in regards to Thank you. These roles that are breaking. Okay. Now, when you're with the narc and you're in an empath, um, narcissistic dynamic, spirit is saying that there are implants that these darker forces implant into you. You end up getting more pain or more bodily aches or um, they implant things in your chakra systems. Okay. Energy implants where it takes time to purge on a DNA level, right? Especially if you've been sexual sexual with them, you take in a lot of their implants. You take on a lot of their demons. You make contracts with their demons, their demons and your demons, because we all got demons, 
because we this is a dark ass place okay that we have to work through these dark these dark things um i think you spirit is saying you may have come with like say a contract with like two demons say the demon of gluttony and the demon of fear but then you get with the narc or you get with an alien love bite something that's sent to you by darker forces now you've got like you know all seven seven deadly sins where you only had two you know because when you're intimate that way you are giving up um that energy to the person now the empath feels this depth with a narcissist because it mimics your true soul count counterpart so you they get the connection that way it creates a chemical response with you right um, because it ignites a something in your soul memory it's not the spark of divine love but it ignites something in your soul memory that you're like oh my god this is my person whereas spirit is saying with your twin it is so profound thank you it is so profound that you know it's from God. And that's the best way that I can explain. If you haven't had that experience, then Spirit is saying keep seeking God. Because to know God is to know your twin, right? So when you're in prayer and you feel God's presence, you feel that with your twin. You won't ever feel that with the narc. You won't ever feel that with, with somebody who's not meant to be for you, right? You'll feel peace from God, but you won't feel that way about that person. Okay, with your twin and a high counterpart, you feel that same way that you feel with God, a holy presence, a beautiful, unconditional love that God gives you. Um, right. And so Spirit is saying the power struggles that come between empath and narc, right? What happens is the empath gets triggered, right? Because the, the, the darker forces know, like, they're tricking you, right? So they know. They're like, okay, so... Here's the chemical response. We're going to, they have the same quality as their twin. So here we go. We're going to trigger this. We're going to trigger that. And it pulls you in. Then you have sex with the person. Then it pulls you in even harder and it feels great. And you're like, oh my God, this person is my person. But once those attachments, that, that is a necessary point for the energies between the empath and narcissist and the narc to be able to um, merge the demons, the darker forces to create another container of darkness so that you can play out a uh, power struggle. And to break out of that means that you have to let go of an identity that you created while you were in relationship with this person. Okay. And that identity is going to always be back to your core wounding that we talked about at the beginning of this, right? Your identification of either, either it's like Amber Heard with the aesthetics, right? Or if it's, you know, you've been wounded by trauma. You can see that because Johnny Depp had um, an abusive mother who would hit him and beat him, right? So you can see how he's redeveloped that connection with, with Amber, right? It's the same thing that we do in, in human conditioning, that if we have trauma, we then want to fix or help another person. And we believe that that's what love is, you know, because that's how the conditioning that we've had. And so that dynamic plays out in regards to the different quality, the qualities that mimic your twin flame union, okay, that mimic your person. And getting out of that is one of the hardest things that empaths do because, thank you, Spirit is saying, we have to get out of the people-pleasing mode. We have to get out of giving the benefit of the doubt. That's a big one for empaths. I'm going to say that. Spirit said, and I tell my clients to stop giving people benefit of the doubt. If they show you once, if they show you and they say something, they say that that's who they are. Don't question it. If people show you who they are, that's who they are. Don't believe anything else. And they make an excuse like, oh, it was just off that day. No, that's who they are. You know, I've had to cut off friendships because of jealousy, people stealing money from me, people just you know spewing out their ass and then apologizing and then nothing ever changes if nothing changes that person is siphoning energy from you okay and that's what narcs do and be able to move out of that into true divine love is to get a closer relationship with god to break the roles and identification of belief systems of your wounding that you that you have since you were a child and to heal and to purge that and to, yeah, Spirit is saying, is to know God within yourself. Once you know God, you can know God and how God works through your life. To know who you are as a high-level soul, right? Because with your person, that's never going to happen. And so these tumultuous relationships with the narcissism and empath 
dynamic. Spirit is saying everybody comes into this world with a certain amount of light codes. Okay, twins and high level soulmates have a higher coding. Okay, and dark codes. You come in with the dark codes. I, I came into a very dark ass family with a lot of trauma. Okay, I see a lot of my own family still stuck in a lot of those patterns, right? That they don't feel. My, my depth, they don't feel I'm to a certain level, but not to the depth that I can feel. And um, there's healing. It's breaking. I believe it's breaking because I'm doing the work, right? But it's breaking. I'm seeing shifts in, in that, in the DNA lineage. But the thing is, right, Spirit is saying that everybody comes into this world with certain levels of narcissism, which is dark codes, and certain levels of empath codes. And it depends, again, on your path and what you're meant to be doing and how you can let go of that identification process. Uh, empaths have an issue with the fragility point, right? So we have to know when you're being fragile. You get butt hurt easily. You got to build a backbone, empaths. You got to. You got to be strong. People people believe in this new age community to be an empath. You're like loving. And people, when they become friends with me or they, you know, and I got to, I'm out. Like if somebody steps on my boundaries and I'll be like, mm, you know what? I don't agree with that. That's a boundary of mine and I'm firm about it. But if they do it like again, I give them three chances. If they do it again, I'll mention it again. And the third time I snap and I don't care who's around if it's in front of public or in front of people, the third time, they damn got their fucking warning, okay? I will snap. Because it comes to the point where I am not putting that energy in my life. You're lucky you got two damn warnings, okay? We have to become stringent with darker forces. You cannot move into your power if you're going to have, um, uh, if you're going to coddle the narc, the darker energies, okay? If you don't stand a ground towards them so you know your place because you're claiming your light. You're claiming your place in that dynamic, right? And you don't have to be rude about it, but you can be firm. You can hear my voice. I get firm. People don't like that. <laughs> and um, you don't back down. You do not back down. Like, for instance, I have not backed down with my twin. It's like, get rid of get rid of the karmic, get rid of the karmic or see ya for the rest of this incarnation. Like, see ya. Because um, you have to know your discernment of energy to keep your energy pure to keep your connection to God pure and to allow the visions and the higher energies to flow into your body to know your mission. And that is mastery, my loves, okay, as an empath. Get rid of the fragility. If you're feeling fragile in your sensitivity, okay, well, I'm always hurt or you're playing the victim role. This person always does this to me or I'm always left out or I'm always being treated this way. Yes, because you're dealing with narc people. You're dealing with people with darker forces, but it isn't absolute opportunity for you to transcend out of that energy and to let go of that fragile piece of that role of the identification that came from your wounding as a child and to level up into your power right now for narcs right if they have gained enough of their light codes if they have done if it started to go into their healing or they're starting not everybody not all narcs okay depends on how much darkness that they've agreed to hold and to work in, if they're doing black magic, well, they got a lot of karma to heal, okay? If they're doing energy work and dark magic and think they know what they're doing and they're they're doing it for power and control and to control the situation or to put death spells on people or to control or to bind their lover to them, okay? If they're doing black magic like that, let me tell you, they got lifetimes of doing that. They It's going to be very difficult for them to move on in their life because they have to find their light codes of what caused them to want to control God's will on this planet and to work with darker forces to manifest materially instead of evolutionary with God's light. There's a difference. You can manifest with the darkness to gain all the material power control that you want, right? Amber, heard, go look at her, okay? <laughs> there, there are people like that, right? Or to manifest in alignment to your gifts, your talents, and how God made you is different, completely different, right? And depending on that karma that that person has created, a lot of narcissistic people in this lifetime depends. Not all of them are meant to wake up. Some of them may and heal and transform. That means that they're finding another piece of their soul that was taken from darker forces and they, they gain a rebirth in this life and they're able to heal and move forward and attract something new. 
depends on where they're at in their evolution process as well. Okay, guys? Okay. So I'll link the alien love bite information down below in the comments. I'll pin it. So you can go take a look at that if you're feeling that, you know, you've gone through that. I know I've gone through that. I went through the whole alien love bite with a partner years ago. It was the most psychotic person I've ever been with in my whole life. My kids and I were talking about that last night. They're like, remember when we were in Bali and you were with this person? And I'm like, oh my God, right? They're like, how did they change so much? Like as soon as you get to, we got to, um, into Indonesia, they're, this person changed and I saw it and I was like, why the hell did I travel with this individual? Oh my God. Um, so it's funny that this all came up last night and I had to do this, this dark work series so that you guys can understand really what's happening in the one mind of the collective. You're seeing it in, in, in the world right now with celebrities, people are waking up. Um, it's happening with, with everyone, right. Who are on the path to bringing God's light here. Um, we're seeing these roles starting to to fall away. So yeah, so I'll link that info down below. Would love to hear your comment on that. I can't believe that's already 45 minutes. Love you guys. If you want to work deeper with me to get into your journey, I definitely am able to see your blocks, your uh, your soul alignment, your high Akashic uh, evolution process, all of that. Uh, take a look down below. My services down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you guys soon. Have a blessed day.